What's up? What's up? Incredible, loved, and valued people. I am so thankful for who you are. I'm so thankful to have the honor of being a part of your life, even if it's through this cool way of a podcast. I am your host, Emma Mae McDaniel, and you are on the Have You Heard podcast today. And this is going to be such a sweet time as we are talking about how the Lord so graciously strengthens us through circumstances we wouldn't have chosen for ourselves. We're going to talk about the importance of walking with the Lord privately and how that directly impacts how we live for Him publicly. And we're going to get to hear the unique and powerful story of the one and only Michaela Noble. So friends, grab your headphones and let's get into the Word. Dear Michaela, I am so thankful that you're on the podcast. Welcome. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> Yay, me too. I, I told you this on the phone the other day, but me and Josh have been talking about how epic it would be if you could be on the podcast for quite a while. And so I am just so thankful that you're here. This is truly a long time coming and an honor to have you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And this is so fun. So for those of you who are watching on YouTube, you may notice we're in a different setting because we are in our new home. And so I'm so happy to welcome you into my new home. And I'm so glad that you're here. But Michaela, I would love for you to share with us what is something that made you smile today? Well, I like that. (laughs) Um, I think something that made me smile today just is my mom. Um, she just got back from a trip and her and I live together and she helps take care of me. And just when I wake up and see her, she's just the happiest woman ever. And she, um, she is an active lady. So she gets up super early and she'll go and do these boot camp workouts and then she'll go and bike Whoa. miles and then she'll come and wake me up and all I've done is slept. And she's like, I've biked 10 miles this morning and worked out all this time, but She's ready to go and on fire for the Lord and ready to get the day started. So it just, it wakes me up in the best mood because she's in a good mood. Wow. Yeah. Talk about inspiring. (laughs) Yes, I know. My mom is like a superhero. She's amazing. She's amazing. Yeah. Have you seen that play a role into your, I've just noticed such a character of being driven in you and persistence and just going above and beyond have you noticed like different things about your own character and different things about how you take things on has that been inspired by your mom absolutely yes um I think just being an athlete and just from my mom I've learned so much and through you know tough love just for the best wanting the best for me I think She's taught me how to persevere and wow. keep going when you don't feel like it. You know, if your emotions are heavy and you feel like you can't go more, she um, pushes me to go further. And it's just, it's it's the best. That's really sweet. I hope that she listens to this and she knows that she definitely you've, will. <laughs> that you've, she's impacted you like that because I bet that would make her day. That's really, really special. But oh yeah, I, I tell her very often. Oh, good. That's important. I I actually love that you do that because I think sometimes we can think about how much somebody would like makes a difference in our lives, makes us smile, just brings us refreshment. But sometimes we may not say it as much as we probably if we could go back, we would be like, man, I if I ha- could go back, I would say that more because words are just so significant. So I'm really glad that you tell her that all the time. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You kind of hinted at it, just like how your mom takes care of you and about you being an athlete. And I I think that it would just be so cool to have like a time where you just share literally your story regarding the day of your accident. Um, because like just from the moment that you woke up to the moment that you went to bed that night and what that day held to bring everyone in who may not know who you are and may not know like, like, why is your mom taking care of you and how has athletics played a part in that? Just to share, um, your story from that day. Okay. Um, I got injured September 20th, 2021. 
And it was, again, it was just the most regular day. Um, I got up and I went to school. It was the week of homecoming um, at my high school. And we, I was doing school cheer and we had a pep rally at the end of the week to celebrate um, the homecoming football game. And then of course the homecoming dance, which was the following day. Um, and so I went to school, went to my classes, saw my friends, had cheer practice. Um, and then I came home and I got changed, ate a snack, and then went to a practice that we did outside of school um, to teach some of the football players how to do, um, how to dance. We were doing like a country dance with the football Wait, players fun. <laughs> for the, yeah, for the pep rally in front of our whole school. It's like a tradition we do in our little small town in Texas, and it's so cute. Like, well, we we wear cowgirl boots, and then um, the senior varsity cheerleaders dance with the senior football player boys. Um, so it's just so cute and so precious and something to look forward to, like, all four Aww. years of high school, you know? Yeah. Um, and so we were over at a friend's house practicing in the backyard, and we there was a part of the routine where we... You and your partner were going to do like uh, a signature like move or dance or flip or whatever. Um, and so we were teaching the boys how to do uh, a specific flip. And it's super easy. I'm sure you've seen it on like America's Got Talent or like maybe a lot of people have just done it. But um, I'll try and explain it. It's where someone has their hands and you put your foot in their hand. So you have one foot mm -hmm. on the ground, one foot in their hand. And then you would put your hands on their shoulders and uh -huh. they would throw you up and you would push off their shoulders and do a backflip. So it's like, they help you do a backflip, it's assisted. Um, yeah. Super easy, again, we were gonna teach the boys how to do it. Um, so me and one of my teammates were up to do it. And I, we've, I've heard all different things, you know, from there was about 30 people there. Um, and then obviously what I felt was different because a lot went on in the seconds, but, um, I didn't make it fully around and I landed straight on my throat um, on the grass in the yard. And um, I say this to people and if I wouldn't have experienced it myself, I wouldn't have been fully like believed it. But um, the instant I hit the ground, I am, I just got like such this sense of peace. Of course wow. I was in a lot of, I was in a lot of pain. I was in so much pain, but I got a sense of peace. And instantly, somehow, I knew I was paralyzed. Did not know what that felt you like knew. before. Oh, I knew it, I knew the instant. And I did not try to move. I did not try to get up. I didn't try to scream, cry, anything. I laid there, and I was faced away from everybody. Everybody was over here, and I was faced this way. And my body just knew it was serious. Obviously, shock hit instantly. And um, just all of us were so athletes. Aware. I was so aware. A lot wow. of people I talked to, um, so like if people get paralyzed, maybe lower in, like if they break lower in their backs um, or whatever, it's not as serious. It's still very serious, but the higher you go up on your spine, obviously the more injury that is caused. Um, so I broke my C6, which is like right here on the backside um, of my neck, and it's very serious. Some people can die on the scene um some people will die on the way to the hospital in the hospital everything so um just there's been so many blessings through this my journey so far that i'm just so excited to share with you and everybody listening it's mm -hmm. it's absolutely crazy so i hit the ground i knew it was serious um people were kind of freaking out obviously um Nobody tried to move me or anything, which is good, because that would have made the situation worse, you know. Um, yeah. But someone got my phone, called my mom. My mom wasn't even home from dropping me off yet and was like, please come wow. back. Michaela's hurt. And again, I've grown up in cheerleading and doing sports. So my mom was like, okay, maybe she like broke her ankle or like got a concussion or something which those are serious too but she was obviously not expecting this big of a situation so my mom was on her way back and again just 
so many God winks in this whole thing. The mom inside came out and she was a nurse. So she lay down next to me and she just talked with me. And again, I was very calm. Don't know how. I it, I seriously, it, it was God. I, I was so calm. Didn't cry, didn't scream, nothing. I just talked to her and, you know, we had very basic, simple conversation just to kind of mm-hmm. keep me awake and aware and breathing and everything. Um, and the ambulance came and my mom was there, thankfully. So she got a ride in the ambulance with me. Um, but through the whole process, Emma, literally up to my surgery, I would say, I, God pushed this with me. I, hmm. I mean, I was in so much pain. Yes, don't get me wrong. And I was scared. Yes. And somehow I knew I was paralyzed already. Yes. But I was like, okay, like, I'm in this situation. I like, there's nothing I can do about it. Really, you know, there really is nothing I can do. I'm hurt. And I have to, I have to go through the situation that I'm in right now. Um, So I don't oh, know. It's it's my just my goodness. I something I love that you said a couple of times is I was in so much pain, but simultaneously I had so much peace and God was with me. And I'm so thankful that you brought that up and said that in the way you did because I think that sometimes we can associate God being with me and his presence being so close to I won't go through hard times and I won't experience pain and it won't be difficult. But you said that, no, it was actually in the pain that God was with me and didn't mean that the pain went away, but I had peace that anchored me and guarded me and ruled in my heart as he walked with me through the pain, as he was with me in the ambulance in the midst of the pain. So thank you for saying that because That honestly is the most comforting thing ever because the reality is, is that we live in a world where we were, well, where we will experience pain, but to know that God is with us and his peace is not circumstantial, his peace is not with us only in certain scenarios is so comforting. And that's so powerful that in a moment where it does not make any sense for you to have calmness, that's exactly what you had. Absolutely. It's it's crazy looking back on it and just the people um, in the ambulance and my mom and my family obviously rushed to the hospital and got to see me before I went in. And I'm I'm the type of person, um, I did social media before just for fun, but I yeah. love to document everything. Um, oh. So I, even in the ambulance, I was like, mom, take my picture. Like I was calm enough to ask my mom to take a picture. Kayla, that's I knew, crazy. <laughs> I, wanna see, I knew I wanted to see it later. I knew I would want to see it later. I was like, oh. eventually I'm going to be better and I want to see this. So um, when I was in the emergency room, you know, I think the shock was starting to wear off. Um, thankfully, they were giving me lots of medicine, but the pain mm-hmm. was very intense um, and I was starting to feel nauseous and just get all these crazy things as you can imagine my body is just freaking out Mm -hmm. um but I my siblings were in there with me and they were trying their best not to cry um but I just talked to them and I I'm blessed with the best siblings in the world I have two older siblings um Connor and Mariah and my brother is 25 and my sister is 23 but they were in there and they were just playing my favorite music, holding a fan on my face because I was sweating and just so hot. And they were just talking to me and um, just giving me peace as well. Um, it was amazing. And family, you'll see wow. through this whole, through my whole journey so far. Um, and I pray that it continues. My family and my strength and my relationship with God is the only reason I am here today. Seriously. I mean, I've heard it threaded all throughout our time together today, even that your family has played such a crucial role, like your your siblings just being so present with you and being so close and your mom being so just caring and compassionate and present with you as well. And I love too. you said your your relationship with your family and your relationship with the Lord Without those things, you don't know where 
you would have been. So you knew the Lord and you were walking with him before this took place, you would say. That's really sweet. Tell us about your relationship with the Lord leading up to this point. I would love to. It's my <laughs> favorite thing. Um, so I would say I grew up in a Christian home. You know, we would mm-hmm. we would go to church on Sundays, but I would say I it was in my parents' faith. Okay, so I would go yeah. to church and I liked it and I would learn. You know, but um, this is crazy too. I never wanted to get baptized because I wanted it to be. I said I would say yeah, I wanted it to be my decision not just something I kind of check off the list, you know? I wanted to wait until I was older and really understood what that meant. Crazy that a six, that a seven-year-old, you know, eight-year-old would say that, but I don't know. I just was like, I want to wait until I understand. So I never got baptized when I was younger because I wanted to wait what it really meant till I understood what it really meant. Um, And um, I just was growing up, you know, a lot of things are happening um, and would say, you know, just I knew God, but I didn't have a relationship with him. I knew of him um, mm-hmm. and learned about him, but ne- never really had a good relationship with him. So I began high school and was kind of just not being, I was not ever a crazy kid, but just kind of a regular high schooler. I was in sports, I was with friends hanging out and everything and then I became close with this one special special girl which I've told you about Evelyn Grace she is one of my best friends ever her and my other best friend Kendall um they their families and them were just so dedicated to their relationship with God and going to church and prioritizing him and spending time with him and setting like setting time aside during the day Mm -hmm. um to just study the word and talk to him and that was something that i was kind of like whoa like that's i've never seen that before you know yes and i was obviously very intrigued um but just like a little hesitant um and they they would just talk to me and we'd pray together and we just spent so much time together because we did school cheer together and we were in the same friend group and with school and everything. Um, and they invited me um, to church with them multiple times. And so I went and I loved it. And again, it wasn't like I was new to going to church. It was just kind of like a reboot. I was restarting uh, my relationship with Christ. I had a lot going on with my family um, and just life, you know, in general. Yeah. Um, and so I was like a little resistant to go and say that all things are good because in my life all things are not good and I just didn't understand um and I just like felt just so defeated in my my current situation that I was in so it was I would say it was probably like the spring and our church had a summer camp coming up um you know a beach camp and so they were going and they're like okay well like please go with us like this would be so much fun I love the water. I had such a connection just with the water and the ocean and the beach and everything. But they were like, go, like, this could be such a good just time to get away from everyone and everything mm-hmm. going on in your life. All the craziness. It's, this would be a great time. And so I asked my parents and they were like, yes, like, do it. Like, that sounds amazing. And so I signed up and I went and it was just, I was so excited um leading up to the beach camp like i was just like this i mean i knew obviously this is something so good and all these people around me are so on fire for the lord i'm i was just i wanted it you know you you want what those people have because you just see it's something so special so um we would have bible studies and i would ask them so many questions because i i wanted to know i'm a i'm I'm a very curious person so i like to know Mm um just i like to learn and like to know more so um we went to beach camp and it was again it was just life changing i dedicated my life publicly to christ and i got baptized in the ocean and it was the most beautiful thing i had 
the people that led me back to God surrounded all around me to hug me as soon as I got the, wow. out of that ocean. And it was it was just beautiful. It's something I remember, I'll remember forever, obviously. Um, and the craziest thing, Emma, is that was three months before my accident. So I no was... No way. Yes. So I was like on fire for the Lord, just felt like a completely different person, just completely changed the way I was living life, you know, scrolling, like unfollowing people on my social media, like celebrities and stuff that I kind of idolized. Just so, so many life changes were happening and it was just so good. I had never felt more just good, you know, just happy. Yeah filled with life um the spirit does that yes it's crazy that's so incredible there's two things that you said that i just want to hone in on super quick because they were just so encouraging to me one is just your eagerness to ask questions i love a curious spirit because i always think of moses whenever he takes note of the bush that was like burning but not consumed and he takes note of it and goes towards it to see like what is this all about and it says that the lord sees that he was intrigued and curious on what it was about and that's whenever the conversation between the lord and moses start and the lord says moses moses and i have just meditated on that for years just thinking about how much i really believe the lord loves a curious spirit he loves a heart that just desires to learn that desires to know that desires to be taught and he can do a lot with a heart like that with a lot with a heart that wants to know him and is curious to go beyond where they currently are and so I think that that's just so beautiful that you were in that curious space before you were like, yep, I'm all in. I'm totally so all in. So that is just so cool to me. And then It's so I, special. It's so, so special. And how crazy is it that that literally took place three months before your accident? I was not aware that that was a part of your story. Yes, God's divine timing. That is so insane. And I love too the way that you're talking about like when I gave my life to the Lord, things in my life looked different because those two things go hand in hand. They That makes sense. I'm currently reading in the Psalms and in Psalm 119, the psalmist says something so beautiful. He's like, I, this won't be quoted perfectly, but he basically says like, Lord, you have saved my soul, all of these good things that you've done in my life, I will thank you by living in obedience to you. Like when I've experienced how good God is, when I've experienced his incredible work in my life, I am compelled to thank him by changing the way that I live. And that is exactly what you just described you did. It's like to know him and then to live for him, those things they aren't separate. Absolutely. I love that. Mm -hmm. I love the way you said that. Yeah. The word is so good. I literally read that the other day. So it's like fresh on my mind, but I just think that's so powerful. So, okay. This is crazy. So you are so on fire for God. You have a solid core of some people who are with you, walking with God beside you. You've got a there's a lot going on in your family, a lot going on in your world, but you've got a solid relationship with your mama and your siblings. And then this happens and you're going to the hospital. You're asking them to take your picture in the ambulance. They're playing your favorite, favorite music. What was after, cause I'm assuming you had surgery, right? Yes. So I had, um, you know, I'm not even quite sure all the technical stuff, but um, basically they had to take a little piece of my spine out um, that wow. was causing um, the damage to my spinal cord. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. So when you come out and you are like in a place where you, you like come to your awake, what is the news that they give you? Yes. Yeah, so it was I was awake. Um after the surgery, a few hours after, obviously very groggy and 
the following days are kind of a blur for me. Um, yeah. I spent I spent four weeks in the ICU and then um, a month in rehab, which we'll get to. But um, after, I remember it was like two days after, I think the doctors were like, okay, like today's the day we're going to break the news to Michaela that she's paralyzed and she'll never walk again and she'll never do X, Y, and Z and her life's going to be different forever, you know? Um, and my whole family was so scared, obviously. Just they were nervous of how I was going to react to the news. I mean, it's not something just light that you can just say to someone. Um, so we're, they, they were very nervous. Um, mm. And they said that when they told me, I literally said, I know. Wow. Yeah. That I was just like, I know. Like, even all the medicine and all the what? tubes and everything hooked up to me. Again, I knew, I knew in the instant when it happened. And it wasn't like, boom, I'm paralyzed. But this is so wild. I don't even think I've told anybody. It's just like came up in my brain. But I was, I always would watch Inside Edition like videos on YouTube and like weird stuff. But this girl, she was doing, it was a young girl. She was like seven, I think. She was doing a back bend and just like collapsed in her family room and was like screaming and crying. And her mom was like, get up, you know? And she was like starting to lose feeling and balance of her limbs. And um, she like broke her own spine. So I feel like I remember that just like she didn't have control of her body. And I kind of like thought about that. And I was like, wait, that's what's happening to me. Like my body feels like it's on fire. I'm in so much pain. But I can't move anything. And I'm not going to try. You just knew. I just knew. So oh weird. my goodness. Okay. Friend, there is so much there is so much in that. So you hear news that is literally life changing and you had already come to terms with it before the doctors had even given you that news. And I am just so curious. So like the days following, I I just wonder, was it one of those moments where you come to terms with it and you're honestly in like a solid place mentally, but then as you're processing it and you're back at home and trying to find what your new routine looks like, what were you feeling that was like, man, this is hard. Were you feeling discouraged, afraid, anxious? Were you frustrated? Tell us like, how are you feeling as you kind of went back to your normal that was totally new? Absolutely. The months that followed, months and months that followed before I even got to go home was such a beautiful time in my life. And I'm really, I really am so thankful for it. But yeah, it was, I mean, don't get me wrong. It was the hardest thing I've ever gone through in my life, as you can imagine. Um, I remember it was probably four or five days um, after it happened that I was still in the ICU with my mom. And, you know, I you're just laying in a hospital bed, physically cannot move anything, hooked up to so many tubes and machines. I had to be on a ventilator. My lungs collapsed twice. There's so many things that was just so defeating, you know. Um, mm -hmm. It went from my mom hearing that, like, I'll never walk again to having serious conversations of, okay, well, if her lungs collapse one more time, like, we're going to need to figure something out, you know, like what's what's the next step going to look like, um, like life or death situations, which is just something Gracious. I'm obviously not a mother, but I just something you never want your child or anybody to go through, you know, yeah. not even your worst enemy, you know, it's just something that is one of those things you hear about and you're like, I just couldn't imagine, but um I, my health just continued to improve and I got better. Um, I was on a ventilator for quite a lot of time and I couldn't talk for two weeks. And I think, Emma, I couldn't talk, I couldn't eat. And there was about four or five days where I couldn't even drink water. Um, that day I was just hooked up to feeding tubes. And 
my mouth, as you can imagine, was so dry, I couldn't even drink water, that they would take these like little sponges soaked in water and just like wipe it inside oh, and around my, my mouth. It, they're just things that I'll, I'll never forget, you know? Yeah. Um, and when you lay in a bed like that, physically just beaten down, um, to, you just have your mind, you know, you have a little hospital TV and your people, but especially when I couldn't talk. I just, I had my mind and I was like, well, I can talk to God, obviously. He mm. can listen and he can hear me. Um, so I had some just amazing conversations with God just through that time. You know, I'm experiencing things that thankfully not a lot of people have to experience. Yeah. Um, but my family, even though they're right there and they're seeing all these things, they don't know what it feels like. Um, so, you know, just through all the scary moments and all the scary medical things and hospital things, I would just really breathe and just talk to God because that's literally all I had in, in those moments. But taking away everything, Emma, I was, I just was like, thank you, God. Thank you for taking away all the schoolwork, all the stupid schoolwork, you know, I was worried about and these upcoming tests that I was stressing about. And I really, um, this could be a whole other conversation, but really struggled with my body image and just being mm. a teenage girl, you know, and having a following on social media, um, just taking away all these things. Like I just was stripped away and I was just Michaela with God. And I... It is beautiful. I think I was at so much peace because everything I was worrying about was taken away. And I just had one thing to focus on. And that was myself and my relationships and my health. And they've made me so happy. Wow. Being able to prioritize those things. Yeah. Wow. The One of the reasons I wanted to have you on the podcast is because... I have been so encouraged by your walk with the Lord through this time and I wanted our time together to be such a powerful encouragement to those listening who either have gone through a hard time, are going through a hard time, or will go through a hard time because we all go through hard times <laughs> in life. Um, and I wanted to also bring wisdom and insight to help people navigate those hard times well. And I really pray one of the takeaways that someone may need to hear today is the way that you navigate those hard times well is that you breathe and talk with God. I love so much that you said that. This It's so sweet. This morning I was in Psalm 119 because I'm reading it just bit by bit because it's so long and it's so rich. So I'm just reading a little bit every morning. And this morning the psalmist was talking about how he is getting insults from like princes. So like high majorly influential people are insulting him. And of course that's a different scenario than what we're talking about here. But he said, in that circumstance, I will meditate on your word, O oh God. And so he's in this very heavy, chaotic, difficult circumstance. But his response was, I will meditate. I will dwell. I will choose to think on your word, O oh God. And that's just what I hear when I hear you say, I just breathe and I talk to God. So for those of you who are listening and you're going through a difficult time where this is something that you come back to because tomorrow starts a difficult time, I pray that you are encouraged to breathe and choose regardless of the circumstance I'm finding myself in today. I will meditate on the word of God. I will talk with my God. I'm so thankful that you said that. That is so powerful. Thank you. Um and something that um, one of my best friends, Evelyn Grace, and I always talk about is, um, I don't even know who said it, but just talking about Yahweh and how mm -hmm. that is um, kind of replicates the respiratory 
sound of breathing in yes. and out. Um, and that you're speaking or breathing God's name and praising him with every breath. And I think that's so incredibly beautiful because if someone's a Christian or they don't even believe in God, every breath that they're taking is given by him and they're praising him, whether they realize it or not. And I just think that's so incredibly powerful and beautiful and just yes. it makes me I just want to tell everybody it's just so special that we are alive and we're breathing and again it's one of those things that thankfully we don't have to think about because all of us are healthy um and just given such beautiful and great bodies and strong bodies but when I'm in those situations where um I had a trach and I wasn't able to talk for weeks and I didn't know if I would ever be able to breathe on my own ever again, or if a machine is going to be breathing for me for the rest of my life. Um, it's, I'm just like, I'm still breathing, I'm still breathing. And when I was able to be taken off those machines and breathe on my own, Emma, it was just amazing. And just waking it up each morning, um, I'm just, I'm so thankful, you know, mm -hmm. Um and just going through such difficult times, it just changes your perspective on everything. Um, and you talked about in the beginning how, well, we talked about it about um, telling my mom I'm appreciative of her. One yeah. of my biggest takeaways from my situation is, and I think about you sometimes when I tell people, because you, the first time I met you, you said, I love you. And Obviously, that's Aww. in our world, in our world that we live in. That's not something you just say to someone when you first meet them. But I was like, I love you too, Emma. And it's just my situation just, and again, life is so precious and we all know that. But sometimes it takes situations for us in our personal lives to realize that. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was just like, I made some commitments to myself, you know, laying in those beds like, Okay, from now on, one, you're going to be outside a lot, Michaela. You need to get fresh air and be outside with nature because you love it. Being stuck in hospital rooms for months, all I wanted was to watch the sunset, to breathe in fresh air, you know. Um, it just makes you appreciate those things. But two, I want people to know exactly how I feel about them, obviously positively. Um, but if... I love you and appreciate you. I'm going to let you know, and I'm going to let you know often. Um, sometimes I think my people might be like, okay, Michaela, like I get it. But I wake up in the morning and I just think about certain people and I text them. Hey, hey, Emma, you've been on my mind recently. I've been thinking about you and praying for you. And I just hope you're having a great day. And let me know if I can help you with anything, you know. I just, if someone's on my mind, I'm going to let them know. And if I love somebody, I don't have to wait a specific amount of time to let them know, you know, what society thinks like, okay, now is a good time to say you love them or like whatever. You know what I mean? I, I'm going to tell you, I love you and I appreciate you and you inspire me because again, you, we don't know if we're going to wake up tomorrow and every day is a blessing, but mm -hmm. I never want to regret telling someone how I truly feel because again words hold such power like you said gosh I am so inspired and I just feel so fired up this morning getting to talk with you this is so good and so true I I think sometimes we are so timid and we allow fear of what people will think we allow um just worry about what the cultural norm is we allow just our own excuses and lies that we believe like the lies that we've come into agreement with from the enemy hinder us from just being so expressive and being so bold and being so out loud with love and being so intentional like i love how scripture is just like scripture is so clear that we are to be bold with kindness and bold with love he said like paul said outdo one another in good deeds outdo one another in acts of service like we we are 
we were literally wired to go above and beyond for each other. We were made to speak life over each other. We were made to love each other with intentionality, with boldness, without holding back. Um, there is no fear in love. Love casts out all fear. And so I am just so encouraged by you. And I'm so thankful that you said all of those things. And it's so cool too, because you've been so just vulnerably, I'm so grateful for your vulnerability. You made a comment about how you had struggled with insecurity regarding your body image. And then almost immediately after that, you went into this whole, this whole beautiful speech about how thankful you are for the breath in your lungs and how thankful you are for the voice that you have to communicate to people. And so I just think that's really sweet that you went from being insecure about your body to thankful for the body that you've been given. Absolutely. And that's just really sweet that God, he allowed something to take place and through this tragic accident, he gave you a gratitude and a a genuine love for the gift of your body that he's given you. That's so beautiful. It's 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 beautiful, yeah. It really is. That's something that I've been writing a lot about. Um I've journaled and kind of documented this whole journey since the beginning. That's something how a lot of people have found me is we created a page on social media um, called Michaela's Fight, and we still post occasionally, but since the day of my accident for the first probably year, every single day we would post a picture vi or a video, pictures, videos of me working out um, or just whatever it may be. And the vulnerability was what I think captured a lot of people because, again, I'm struggling with something. This is something I say to people when they're scared to kind of tell me their problems because they're like, well, it's nothing compared to your situation. It's like, well, you're right, but your situation isn't like my situation is nothing compared to your situation. We're all dealing with very difficult times and mine just happens to be very physical. I'm still dealing with things mentally as well um, and emotionally, but my situation is just more physical than yours may be. Um, and, but our situations are, also different but the significance of them is just as great they're all difficult times for all of us you know yeah. um and it's it's i think the power of being vulnerable which i used to think as something that showed weakness is actually the opposite it's very brave to be vulnerable it's very brave to say hey i'm struggling i'm I'm having a really hard time right now. I don't understand maybe why this has happened to me or why I'm going through this. Um, but I think it's so special to open up to people because we all are struggling with something. No matter how happy or amazing our life may seem, we are all human. We are all dealing with things. Yeah. Um, I think it's just it's so powerful to open up to people. And by doing that, what I have seen on social media and then going back to school last year is by you kind of reaching your hand out people are going to grab your hand and say hey since you've been vulnerable like let me talk can I talk to you about what I've been dealing with because I can relate to you and I can understand even though maybe let's say someone's dealing with a loss or a divorce or a breakup um versus my situation of something that's completely changed with my body it's I've created so many amazing friendships and just had some great deep conversations with people just by sharing what I'm struggling with this is so powerful and so true we all have unique stories but we all have this common denominator of being human and desiring to connect desiring to be heard desiring to be loved um and I so agree. I think people don't need permission to be honest, but I think whenever we are honest, we give people this feeling of, oh, I have permission to be honest too. And so thank you for doing that. I've, I've 
I want to talk to you for like an hour and a half. So I wish that we had more time. But the last question I would love to finish our time together on is there's, I feel like there's so much we could go into in this question, but, um, your recovery journey, going to physical therapy, just intentionally day in and day out working so hard. Kind of like how we said at the beginning, your mom has inspired, um, your determination to continue to grow in strength, that has not been an immediate gratification kind of thing. It has not been like, okay, this is the result after we have had surgery and all of the things that you've gone through. This is the result. Tomorrow, you're going to be better, quote unquote, whatever that is. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're going to be stronger, healed. You'll be able to do all the things that you could do prior. Like, in Sometimes that's what we think is like the most ideal. Um, it's been a day by day by day journey. And I just would love for you to speak to the person who is maybe um, struggling with not having that immediate gratification, but is in that tough, long process of growth and strength that happens over time. And what encouragement would you give them? I would say to whoever's listening out there, and I'm going to go back on this and hey, future self, I'm talking to you too, because this life is hard and, you know, people say it's so long and short, but you don't, you don't know really um, Mm -hmm. what it's going to be. But my situation is difficult going in, waking up each morning and saying, okay, I'm going to go dedicate two, three hours to working now and going to better my body um and you know i'm human i wake up some days and i i just break down in tears because i'm like i see again you don't get the instant gratification and it's i could be working towards this for three years emma and nothing changes but i think i think my background in sports has helped and having a good community has helped but i would say just really, I know you've heard this before, but just take it one day at a time because I've had to explain this to people around me. I get, I've never really been an anxious person, um, but after my accident, I have um, obviously had some anxiety and the future really stresses and just really scares me. Um, it's, it's very exciting, you know, but it, it really scares me because I don't know what it's going to look like. When yeah. I'm envisioning the future, it, am I going to be up walking am I going to be up carrying my babies or am I going to be still my wheelchair carrying my babies and taking care of my children that way you know I don't know and no one knows but I think taking it day by day don't even think about tomorrow because I think even the thought of tomorrow I know personally for me and other people out there it's scary it's too much to think about I can only handle what is in front of me today so Don't think about, oh my goodness, I have 35 more lectures I have to go through. I have 10 more tests on this. I have X, Y, Z, you know, amount of hours to log in on these certain things. Today, you have an hour or two that you are going to go and you're going to go give your best effort. And if your best effort is only 20%, go give the 20%, you know, and you're not ever going to regret working hard, Michaela, and the person out there. You're mm-hmm. not going to regret just going and trying and doing your best. And I think one of the best things for me that has helped is finding people that encourage you and keep you accountable and give you the tough love even when you don't want it. And maybe if it is working out, all you want to do is cancel and just lay in bed. You know, it's a cozy day um or if it's just going to school or going to work I think accountability is a big thing um and for me Emma I think writing down and keeping note and keeping track of your progress helps because Mm, you feel like you for me um physically um and with my strength sometimes I feel like oh my goodness I've made no progress like I feel Like every day is Groundhog's Day and nothing's changing. Why am I even putting in this much effort and energy and 
fueling myself if nothing's changing. But then I go back on my camera roll and I look at pictures and videos of some movements or some weights and different things that I did even a couple weeks ago or a couple months ago. And I was, and it just blows my mind because I was like, I could only do that. Like, I thought I haven't made any progress, but I went from like a PVC pipe that I could barely hold above my head to 25 pound weights that I'm lifting above my head. And it's just, it's, you make, we make so much progress, but we never give ourselves enough credit. No matter who we are, what we are, we are our toughest critics, we are. And I think you need to learn to be nicer to yourself and just whatever energy level and effort that you have inside of yourself, give it because you won't regret working hard and working towards a better future for yourself this is so encouraging i feel like this is one that people are gonna just ah go and rewind and listen back to because this is so sweet for those of you who are going through a journey that feels like you're not making much progress and you wish that you felt like you were I hope that you're encouraged by what Michaela just said to take it one day at a time. Don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow, we'll worry about itself. Today's troubles are sufficient for today. Who of you, by worrying, adds a single hour to your life? And write it down. I love that so much. Write down the investment that you're making each day because it's so true. We are very good at having memory loss. We are very good at being hard on ourselves and neglecting to remember where we have come from and how far we've come. And so I am just so encouraged by this. Write down um, what you're investing in each day and then you'll look back and say, wow, I've come a lot farther than I than I thought I had. That's just so good. I love you, Michaela, and I am so thankful for your honesty. I'm so thankful for your encouragement, and I'm so thankful for your walk with the Lord and for how that has just overflowed into our conversation today. I just appreciate you being on the Have You Heard podcast. Thank you so much, Emma. I love You're you. <laughs> and thank you for everybody listening. Um, just Again, just give your best effort and energy today. Be nice to yourself and love on yourself. And just know that God's with you. It might not feel like it, but he's right there. He's listening and he's helping guide you. So good. Y'all, I am so thankful for your life. I am so thankful for the joy of being a part of your life. And I will talk to you all next week. Bye, guys.